Welcome to Wager Talk TV. I am Kelly Stewart, joined by Teddy Covers at Teddy underscore Covers. Make sure you guys are giving him a follow on Twitter. Back with Ask the Experts. Uh, this one's kind of more encompassing of how to make a betting, make a living betting sports. So first question comes from Dan. 072886. Oh, these long numbers always kill me. What does sports gambling for a living look like? Also, please break down your included bankroll required, the number of events required to wager on over the course of a year, when percentage should be successful, and the limit amounts you bet on different sports plus a return on bankroll percentage a year. Dan's getting all in depth, sure. and, and I can we can touch base if you miss a couple of those. So let's start with what does betting sports as a professional look like? Okay, Dan wants to know. Do you uh, want me to say the story I just said off air? <laughs> it's a goddamn roller coaster ride. Are you kidding me? Sure, and, and it's, it's, especially, uh, especially beginning. I, I mean, number one, I sell plays to augment my betting, and I have the whole time I've been in Vegas. And the reason I do that is because it's a freaking roller coaster ride. You do the same thing, Kelly. You, you, you don't sell plays, but you have other ways that right. you augment your income. Just most of the professional bettors that I know do something else to augment their income. And the ones that don't are the guys that are nits and sit in front of the screen all day, and they're taking, uh, you know, taking a penny here and yep. taking a penny there, and it adds up. So it's certainly... You know, the old poker ad is a hard way to make an easy living. And it also depends a lot on what your lifestyle is. You know, when I first moved out here, you know, I didn't have a, you know, I, I wasn't like, it didn't have a great career going or something, you know, and I was able to live relatively cheaply. If you're living on five grand a month, it's a big different than if you got, you know, house payments and car payments and this and kids in school and then you're trying to, you know, make 10 or 15 or 20 grand a month from betting on sports. So let's just say, all right, and, 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 uh, let's answer some of these questions okay. specifically now that we've given them 100 reasons not to do it. All right. <laughs> um, you got a bankroll of $100,000. Okay. You're going to make 20 bets a week, uh, 50 weeks a year, uh, so 1,000 bets a year. Okay. And you're going to bet uh, 1,100 to win 1,000 on every bet. All right, 1.1 million. You're gonna. I was gonna say, I had a bookie tell me one time. He goes, you know, you wager over a million dollars a year, and I was like, please don't tell me that. Like that makes me physically. It's not hard to do. Absolutely, it's not. Um, here you're making 20 bets a week at 50 weeks. You know, taking a couple weeks off, whatever. You win 55 percent of those bets. You've done pretty good. You know, any any pro is gonna be. If you're betting full time year round, you win 55 percent. You're not complaining. So you win 500, 550 grand. You lose 45 percent of the bets with juice. That's 495. So you made 55 grand. From all of that work and all of those bets, 55 grand at the end of it. You're not talking about a get rich quick scheme. Then, all right, so let's say you're gonna do more, 1,500 bets. You know, you're really gonna bet every edge that you see and you're gonna make two grand, of, you know, bets. So now you're in play for more than $3 million over the course of the year and you're gonna end up with about 165 grand uh, of total profit, betting 3 million for the year, you know, more than 3 million. So it's significant how much you're gonna roll over. And also, we're talking about different bankrolls. What are you betting on your futures, all right? Are you betting long shot futures where you need a, a deeper bankroll? Are you betting season wins, which are some of the best bets out there? Full game, in game, separate bankrolls for there. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different things to consider in terms of how you want to allocate your, you know, here's your 100 grand. Well, no, that 100 grand's got to be just for, you know, pre-game betting. And then what are you going to do in game? Then what are you going to do futures? Because that's money you're not going to have for three months or six months down the line. So a lot of things to consider. I, I hope I answered some of those questions. I think it was good. Uh, at what point, when you bet a favorite in a baseball game, do you consider doing a buyback on the plus money? That's from Jay Quick 614. Good question, Jay. And the answer is whenever I don't like my initial bet. It's not about hitting a middle. It's not about getting both sides. It's about do I like my initial bet at the initial price? If I don't like it, I'm going to look for a way to get off it. Okay, the next one in all capital letters from Johnny Kelly. Do not bash William Hill. Uh, I've heard William <laughs> – this is a question from at Golf Ma Mafia 1. I've heard William Hill is viewed as a square book. Uh, so does that mean they shade the lines towards the favorites leaving value with the dogs? The reason why I made the joke when Johnny wrote that in all capital letters is because I'm not allowed to bet, bet at William Hill, and I'm sure you probably aren't either. And that is because – I like to bet those underdogs and mm. sometimes they leave a number like a plus six and a half hanging on an underdog or a seven and a half hanging on an underdog when the rest of town is sitting steady at a seven. Mm -hmm. And if you cherry pick long enough, they say, hey, you know, we just don't want to take your action. That's our business model. So I'm not bashing William Hill when I say that. No, and look, I mean, William Hill has a business model of they're not going to encourage wise guy action. I don't blame them. There are people that are vitriolic in their hate for sports books. I'm not one of those guys. You're allowed to have a business model. And you're allowed to cater to whatever clients you want to cater to. William Hill doesn't shade their numbers uh, way off market. They have a lot of standard market numbers. 
Um, and there's no reason. So you're not going to find all of these dogs at William Hill. Oh, what great no, value here, on the dog. No, but that's why I meant when I said On occasion you will, yeah. On, you on occasion you them. will. But it's not like you're regularly going to find all these great bets at William Hill that you can't find elsewhere. Great stuff from Teddy. If you guys have a question for us for or any of the experts, you can tweet us at WagerTalk. And don't forget, $9 Monday, at both WagerTalk and Sports Memo, all daily packages for Monday is action priced at just $9. That includes any 5% best Bets normally priced at $30.